An automated car, one that relies on sensors and complex algorithms to navigate, is a challenge that many companies are tackling. But if an automated car was only designed to transport goods and not people, how might it look? They don't have steering wheels, they don't have pedals, they don't have seats. There's no way for a person to sit inside of this vehicle. It is completely focused on goods. Wired spoke to Neuro's chief technology officer and design head to learn how they engineered their robotic delivery vehicle. This is Neuro, an automated delivery vehicle. We've now gone through three generations of vehicle development, and we learned so much from, you know, even just some of the hardware design elements or the way that the vehicle operated on roads or how it interacted with our autonomy stack. Companies around the world are developing robotic delivery vehicles to aim at cutting down on our local trips, picking up groceries and delivering food. The team tackled two challenges when making the robot, getting the technology right and designing a car from scratch. It starts here with their arch. So here you can see a main LiDAR, which has 360 degree view of the world, creates a really robust point cloud for our system to use to know exactly where everything is around it. And I would describe it as the ears and the eyes of the vehicle. We have a camera that detects traffic lights, and then we have 360 cameras all the way around as well. Part of the reason why we have that distinctive arch is so that we can pack all of that long range sensing technology into an integrated sensor pod. It also means if we want to upgrade the sensor pod, we can do that without completely tearing up all the beautiful body panels <laughs> yeah. that you made in the rest of the vehicle. Yeah. The team debuted their first design, the R1, in 2018. So R1, we built that within the very first year of the company even existing, from ideation to design. So it was a really rapid, really fast program to get R1 up and running. We learned a lot about the capacity that we need in the vehicle. So we had to adapt the cargo volume to make sure we fit 24 bags of groceries and, and get all the way up to 500 pounds of cargo volume. One of the things we changed with R2 was having the doors go a bit higher as some tall folks went bunk their head on the top of the, the shorter doors on R1. With R2, we wanted to make a fleet of these. And so we really took our time to really detail design a custom electric vehicle chassis with a little bit of a different body panel setup so that we could actually make a large fleet of these. In their latest model, the team honed in on designing a car that was friendly to pedestrians, but suited for the road. The front face was designed to evoke a friendliness. The lights, for example, they're circular, they look friendly. They're a little cut off on the top, so they has a sense of urgency as well, right? Because we want to be friendly, we want to be inviting, but we also want to, don't want to communicate, you know what, take five, six, seven, ten minutes to unload your grocery, because at some point we have to get to the next person. They also reimagined how the car sounded. It took us about six months and with multiple iterations because you're designing a sound on a laptop, but you can really just tell how it sounds when it's on road, when it's driving, and it mixes in with, a, with, the, with the sounds of the movement. We spent a lot of time on the speaker actually as well. What we realized, if you at some point want to operate in cities and you have a lot of like background noise, you have to have a much bigger speaker. We've positioned microphones around the vehicle for detecting emergency vehicle sirens. And so that's what's actually going on back here. So even during the time from R1 to R2, you saw a really big upgrade in the sensors that we had on the vehicle. And the same thing is happening now from R2 to the Neuro is a massive upgrade, both in the capabilities of the sensors that we have, our LiDAR, our radar, our cameras, as well as the compute, which is the brain of the vehicle, have all been upgraded. In their latest version, the team added safety features, like an airbag, to protect pedestrians. And that's what's actually packaged right behind here in that worst case scenario, protect someone's head and neck and really minimize the injury to them in that scenario. Before they build their prototypes, they start with a wooden model. The wooden model was really the first functional prototype that we built of our current vehicle. We've experimented with loading floor height, with the volume of bags that we wanted to accomplish. We take the feedback that we're getting from the engineering team and wrap whatever components we receive, mill them out of clay, do adjustments by hand, and 3D scan them and put them back into CAD all the way to, to tooling release. So that's a really interesting, actually very manual process. And what Daniel described is really going from very low fidelity models to very high fidelity models. You can do that with a wooden model, yeah. but it's much more painful to do that with a full <laughs> clay model. Because once you do that, it's expensive, and you don't want to do that multiple times. Neuro plans on hiring out their vehicles to companies who will use their fleet to deliver everything from packages to pizza. Right now, the company is operating on the roads in Scottsdale, Arizona, Houston, Texas, and the Bay Area, with plans to expand nationwide. 
I can't wait to see over the next five years how this really scales and starts to get out and really give people time back. <laughs>